I perform as PCs are getting smaller and smaller. And I'm not talking about laptops where you have a trade-off for performance, for thermals, and you know being compact. Desktop PCs, 650 watt power supply, dedicated graphics card, and an Intel Core i9. Are you looking at what I'm, mate? How I just pull that in a bag. What? G'day, I'm Cam, and this is the Intel NUC Extreme. Now, this little thing is truly something special. Today, we're gonna to open it up and have a look at the inside. It's just how much performance can be packed inside such a small form factor. I'm talking small, that's my grip. Now, to keep full transparency, Intel sent me this PT to make a different video for their social media channels. This one is not scripted, not paid for. It's purely, I've got my hands on it for a couple more days, and I wanna share with you about how cool this teeny PC is. So why buy a small PC like this? Well, as you can imagine, haven't always had the big desk set up like you see behind me. I lived in a small unit whilst I was at uni studying IT and I had to fit my desk in my bedroom that I shared with my girlfriend, now wife, so space was a premium. The laptop I had at the time just wasn't cutting it. So I built my first gaming PC, the parts arrived, I had someone help me because I didn't want to like fry it, doing something wrong, except I was a bit disappointed at the size. It was really hard to find a case that fit everything that I needed that didn't just have empty space everywhere. Like I always thought they could be smaller and that's why I really like this Intel NUC Extreme. Like it's as small as you can kind of get. Okay, let's open it up and see what you get off the shelf. Ooh, all right, so those four screws in the back take off the back plate. You can then slide off each panel on each side, revealing the inside. If you like, just pull the top part, it opens up and it gives you easy access to this teeny case. So off the shelf, this is what you get. You get a compute unit, which has your CPU, motherboard, and a cooler, a small form factor power supply, case itself, and some fans for the case. I guess you would call these case fans. Intel call this the bare bones kit because it is missing three main things which you need to pick out yourself. Your RAM, storage, and graphics card. Now graphics is pretty easy. Um, they sent over this RTX 3060 for the testing. You can put 3070, 3080, I guess whatever you can power off of the 650 watt included power supply. And it can just slot in vertically next to the CPU. And that's kind of one of the main reasons why this case can be so compact because we've got a vertical motherboard, CPU, and the GPU right next to each other. Uh, it's, it's crazy cool space use. Now if we take off the cooler portion of the compute unit, we can see inside that you have your processor located here, as well as three slots for M.2, as well as our RAM. So we've got two uh, laptop sized RAM sticks there, so dim. And even our Wi-Fi, it runs out here, the antennas into the top part of the case. So you don't have little dongles or things, antennas sticking off the back. They've really thought about reducing everything inside of this case. Okay, so you might be a little bit concerned about cooling because they're packing the graphics card in so close to the processor. How does it get cooled? Well, they use this little shroud, which is quite cool. So they've got a blower fan on the front here that's going to be our intake for the CPU. And then out the top here through these radiator fins and these fans, it's gonna draw any heat out through the top of the case. So for the processor, they actually redirect the intake, so the rear vent here is bringing it in, and then it's coming out through the top. For the graphics card, a standard graphics card, it's gonna be mounted here, it's gonna be in from the side, and then also blown out through the top. But with a blower style graphics card, they bring in from the front and push out the back. You can't use them in this case, because if you use a blower style graphics card, it will bring it in, push it out the back, then the CPU would bring it in from the back with this and then push it out the top. Problem with that is you're now all suffocating your CPU because you're putting all your hot air from the graphics card out and back into the case. I'm really impressed with how small all of this packs together once it's buckled up. Let's check out our thermal performance for this teeny PC. Now out the box, it has the balanced fan mode as default. It shows thermal throttling within the initial boost portion. However, once the power limit kicks in and our package TDP is brought back to the standard 65 watts, temperatures do relax. In BIOS, you can change the fan mode to cool, which will allow fans to ramp up higher, but running the CPU stress test again shows that it doesn't make a huge difference. Only about one degree cooler overall. I have got Cinebench results here if you wanna compare them to other systems online. 
Now I'm gaming on an ultra wide monitor that's 3840 by 1600 with 120 hertz G-Sync. That's obviously what I'm trying to push, that level of performance. Consoles, typically everyone was like, ah, PCs are so much bigger, they're so much larger, so they more space, and my Xbox and my PlayStation is smaller, but these days, this is now coming quite close and more compact to a gaming console. Yes, it's more expensive, but you have more functionality. It has way more abilities than just straight gaming with any custom PC build, you scale it to your needs. So if you need just an i7 with a 3060, you can grab that, or you can go an i9 with a 3080, you scale it to be what you're after. And remember, this is an air-cooled system, so you don't have to worry about water-cooled pipe being bumped in transport. You could take this with you to multiple places and have that full desktop performance. So it's a great gaming beast, but also like a productivity companion. The negatives of going with a NUC Extreme is that your CPU is kind of paired with that motherboard. It's not intended to be able to upgrade it over time. And there's no side of headers on that motherboard. So you can't have a two and a half inch or three and a half inch solid state hard drive. Those would have to be external devices on your desk. For personalization, you're limited to the RGB underglow and the skull on the front. There's no side panel. So I know that a lot of gamers want a glass panel with RGB RAM and GPU and everything, but because it's so compact, there's not a lot you could really see anyway. Now, pricing is really tricky because it is a custom PC after all. Yes, the bare bones kits get you a motherboard, processor, cooler, case, power supply, and case fans, and then you pick everything else. But if you were to build a comparable PC of this size, you're looking at around the same price because this has Thunderbolt 4 ports, multiple M.2 slots, and a 2.5 gig LAN port. If you buy the Intel NUC Extreme 12 that's just come out, the one I don't even have hands on yet, that one has a 10 gig LAN port and both actually have Wi-Fi 6. So we're not dealing with low end components here. This is like top shelf componentry. Shout out to Intel for sending the NUC Extreme 11 to check out and shout out to you for watching my videos because I guess you're the reason why I'm getting sent PCs now from Intel, which is super dope. It's got to go back to them, but that's it. If you like this video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Uh, that's gone back in my bag.